All right, so today we are gonna look at how to service your RV battery. Um, you might start off by wondering why we need to do this. Well, RV batteries are marine deep cycle batteries and they require maintenance. They're different than your car battery in the sense that they provide uh, electricity over a long term versus the short burst required to um, start your starter in your car or something like that. Um, it's a different type of battery and inside it you occasionally need to top it off with um, distilled water. So we're going to do that today and I'll walk you through the steps uh, necessary to do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is locate your battery, which on the tag, uh, it is in this, this front box here, this diamond plate box. You go ahead and open it up. Um, now is a good time to take anything out of here to give yourself room. Uh, if you store anything in here, um, you know, your wheel chocks, um, your foot, anything like that. Uh, just give yourself a little extra room. Um, the, uh, the next thing is there is typically one of these covers on here. Um, it sits there like that. Getting this side off is actually pretty easy. You just push this down and flip it up. This back side locks into place pretty good. It has this clip on here. You see that little ledge. And what happens is that sits down in here. And it's a pretty tight fit. Um, so you need to, what I did was put a flathead screwdriver under here and just press out lightly while holding this in place and then pull up on the lid. And that gave me enough room to get that off. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that your switch is in the off position. The little notch over here indicates that it's in the off position. If you turn this, now it's on. Turn it this way, make sure it's off. Uh, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is disconnect everything connected to the battery before you start working on it. I've already checked and it takes a 916, so I don't know if you can read that. It's not coming in, but it's a 916 socket. Fits right on there. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything off. Before you take everything off, it might be a good idea to take a picture so that you can consult that when you are done and ready to put everything back together to make sure you know where things go. At least on, on the tag here, it's pretty well labeled. All the green wires are going to positive. All the white are going to negative. That makes it pretty easy, but you may want to snap a picture anyway. All right, we're completely disconnected here. Um, but before we go any further, please go get yourself some eye protection. Grab something like this, something that can cover your eyes. Um, what we're about to do is open up a lead acid battery and you do not want any kind of acid splashing up in your face while you do this. So please make sure you have eye protection before you go any further. Uh, once you have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look under these caps and we are going to see if we need to top off the battery with any distilled water. All right, gonna say it one more time. Goggles on and you're good to go. So I consulted with uh, Interstate Batteries website just to double check. Uh, what they require is uh, the water be filled to an eighth of an inch below the fill vent tube. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I looked in there, mine's a little low. Uh, so we're gonna top that off. Um, they recommend doing this every four to six weeks. These batteries do require you to pay attention to them over time. Um, so, you know, if you're new to the RV scene, it's your first deep cycle marine battery, um, please make sure you pay attention to that. Otherwise you can damage the battery or it's not gonna perform as well as it, it normally would. So let's go ahead and, and take a look. Okay, so in order to service one of these batteries, um, you just need to stick a flathead screwdriver right under here. These pop up. As you can see on there, one more final reminder, flush eyes immediately with water and get medical help if you get this acid in your eyes. Please make sure your eyes are covered. Once you have that, you can look in here and you can see the water level. No, I don't know that that's going to show up that well on camera, but what you want to make sure is the water is right up to the fill level in there, and there will be a marker on each battery how to, how to see that. Before we go any further, I want to point out this is distilled water that you want to use, um, and that's it. You don't want to use purified water, you don't want to use tap water, uh, only use distilled, and that is because distilled water um, is free of any kind of minerals or anything else that could be in the water. 
that would adversely affect uh, the battery. And that could be anything from damaging the battery to just reducing the conductivity uh, based on the particles that are in the water. So make sure you use distilled and that's what you want to pour in there. Now, if you have a funnel or something like that, that works well. But you can also just pour in here and uh, just be careful not to spill, um, not to splash any acid up. But you can just top it off this way. Then you'll want to pause and just double check to make sure your water level is where you expect it to be. All right, I put the water in already. Uh, so we'll take a look, see if I can get you a view in there. There you can kind of see we're just below the uh, the fill vent line there. Um, you want to shoot for about an eighth of an inch according to interstate batteries. Uh, that's about as close as I wanted to go without overfilling it. Okay, so for reassembly, these caps, these vent caps, they just push back on. So I've already put everything together here, but just for the sake of a demo, just want to make sure these are pressed on really well. Um, for me, the words uh, face down towards the interstate sign on my battery, uh, but there's really only one way to put them on because there's uh, indentations to go into each of the fill vents. There's only one way to, to squeeze it on there. So once they're on, and you want to look back at the picture you took, if you took one, to make sure you put everything back together correctly. Again, for me, and probably for all of these obvious reasons, um, the white goes to negative, green goes to positive, that's all good. Uh, once that's on, we can make sure everything looks right. So, turn this back to on, and then we can go over here and we can check a light. For me, I've got a voltage monitor, so I can just check that and I can know that the battery is on. It's at voltage 12.3 right now. Um, that's kind of where mine sits. Uh, probably should be slightly higher than that, but this seems to be where my, my battery tends to sit on that voltage meter. And then check the ceiling lights, make sure everything's working. And we look good here. All right, I'm gonna shut the lights off, go back to the battery. And then the last thing you want to do here, which I probably need two hands for, is to put the battery cover back on. I'm going to, just for the sake of it, turn the disconnect off for now. Uh, now I'm going to put the cover back on. Okay, we have the cover back on, and there's one thing I want to point out here. You'll notice that one side of the, the cover has these extra little areas right here, right here, right here, and right here. These are for the wires to be able to come out so you don't pinch them. So when you put this cover back on, make sure that these are facing towards the propane tank or essentially wherever your wires are coming out. By doing that, you give your wires the ability to move around in here without being pinched, which is what you want. All right. All right, and there you have it. Our battery box is closed and we have successfully serviced the battery on our GAMP tag. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, hope it helped you out. Thank you. Hey, thanks for tagging along with me today. This is the first in a series of many videos I plan to make related to maintenance on the tag, things we've done to improve our camping experience, and also travel videos where we document different places we go with our two dogs, Carson and Coda. Um, if you like what you saw, please leave a like or subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.